Now, as a character, the more conscious you become, the more you be, have free will within the context of the plot. I never understood this. And I'm not sure most people understand it. Like, like I grew up in Berkeley in the 19... You know, I was in Berkeley from 65 to 70, the golden age. I was so unconvinced of my own uniqueness that I never understood that the great drama that was unfolding around me, all I had to do was join, and I never joined. I thought it was spectator sport. I mean, I, I marched in the marches, I took acid, I got laid, I did all of those things. But what I mean by I didn't join is I didn't realize that the Grateful Dead were a bus ride away and that I could probably walk into that scene and make a place for myself. Or the Doors, or the Stones, or the Beatles. You pick it. In other words, I define myself as a spectator rather than an actor. And we are all doing that far too much. You can get a lot rowdier than you are. You can make a lot more waves. There's been too much politesse and uh, too much uh, parlor etiquette exercised recently by uh, the counterculture. It's perfectly all right to mix things up. It's perfectly all right to try and accelerate the plot. This will move your character nearer and nearer to the center of the action. And people have asked me then, is the goal to make yourself the, the novel about you is the goal to make the novel about yourself? I don't think so. The goal is to become the author of the novel. Then you can write any damn ending you want for your character or any other. And this becoming the author is this psychedelic detachment. And suddenly you go from being a chessman, a chessman on the board to the chess master looking at the board. It's empowering. It's self-control. Now, people who don't know this are like made of denser stuff than the rest of us. You can just part them like wheat and move through them because they have no sense of the nature of the game they are still embedded in the old Newtonian paradigm and, and are completely powerless to control their own lives. That's what happens to you in the Newtonian game. All the power flows to, I don't know, the White House, the UN, Madison Avenue. It's not clear, but it certainly doesn't reside with you. More and more, I think we need to decondition. That's what I mean by following the plot as written. If you never decondition, you're, you're just a character in somebody else's story. But if you decondition, you can begin to move your life the way you want. And miracles happen. Uh, miracles do happen. They happen even to ordinary people in the realm of, of falling in love because there's something about where the genes go that is very compelling to the universal logos that's watching over us all. So, you know, the stable boy can marry the princess if his heart is pure and the winds of the logos are at his back. That's why we love those fairy tales of the stable boy who inherits the kingdom, because we sense that as uh, our story. The question is, how can you bring back the psychedelic experience, or what can you bring? I know of two techniques, neither very satisfying, both in combination, moderately effective, but crude. The first is a uh, voice-operated tape recorder. They sell these for a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, I've produced some amazing tapes with these. I have one voice-activated tape where you hear me three, uh, clear my throat 200 times in the course of an evening because each time I would clear my throat, halfway through the throat clearing, 
it's voice activated, the tape recorder, so it would catch the last half of However, if you have presence of mind sufficient to speak English, this would be a more informative record of your experience. Yeah. (laughs) And then the other technique, which is less technically dependent, is uh, if you have an insight at a certain level of the experience, you have to repeat it to yourself at another level of the experience and then another level. And by this incremental bucketing method, you can carry almost any insight out into the, into the realm of the world. These insights often don't stand up to scrutiny. Uh, I had a really interesting experience just a week ago. I'm sure you've all had most of this experience, but I finally had it all. It's the experience of having a dream, a very, very complicated dream, the subject of which is the universal secret, which if told would transform everything. It's the I've got it phenomenon. And usually what happens is you you wake up and it's gone just before you get consciousness to get... And you say, my God, I understood everything. I had it down to a single statement. If I could articulate it, the world would never be the same. Well, this happened to me about a week ago, but by some miracle, I actually was able to hang on to the statement into consciousness. And I, and I woke up and yelled this thing. My son was appalled. I mean, it was 6.30 in the morning and I was able to get it out. I hope you're ready. I sat straight up in bed and said, a song is a song. (laughs) Profound stuff. I mean, maybe it is profound stuff. The profound stuff usually has that an X is an X construct. Because essentially what it's telling you is silence would have been an acceptable substitute for this statement. Well, let me say one more thing here, just sort of to wind this up. The metaphor that makes sense for what we're going through, because it gets the biology of it, it gets the drama of it, it gets the risk of it, it gets the fun and the joy of it, is the metaphor of birth. We are about to decamp from three-dimensional space and time. Yes, the earth is the cradle of mankind, but you can't live in the cradle forever. And we're not in this cradle alone. We are squashing and trampling on hundreds of other species that have as much right to be here as we are. So through technology, which means pharmacology, art, and the engineering sciences, we are trying to find a doorway into a new world for the spirit. And it is going to come out of human machine interfacing, pharmacological redesign of the human brain-mind system, uh, down possibly digitalizing and downloading into the microphysical realm. We don't know. I mean, if it makes your hair stand on end to think of being downloaded into the digital realm. There was once a fish who had a great deal of doubts about this plan to conquer the land and tried to urge everyone to think again that no good could possibly come of it. But in fact, The forward thrust of evolution is toward higher dimensions, greater complexity, more information, greater connectedness, and a deeper and deeper uh, sense of the all-pervasiveness of love and meaning. That's what it's really about. All these disparate physical elements come to nothing if they don't add up to more than the sum of their parts. And the more than the sum of their parts is this transcendental element which we call love. That is 
the part of the eschaton that has never left us, that accompanied us across the African grassland and into history. I mean, granted, bloodied and battered by the experiences of sexism and racism and so forth, but never lost as an ideal, never lost as a guiding light and an experience. And I really think that when we dissolve all the boundaries, this is what we will discover, is an unconditional caring, an unconditional affection that flows through all life and all matter and gives it meaning. And you don't have to wait for the end of the world to get this news. You can just short circuit the collective march toward that realization by accelerating your own microcosm of spirituality through the use of these hallucinogens. They are the doorways that the Gaian mind has installed in the historical process to let anybody out anytime they want to, provided they have the courage to turn the knob and walk through the door.